So Fitch downgrades the U.S. credit rating, the debt credit rating, for the first time since 2011. What is going on? Is this a black swan event? Should we expect the markets to just keep dumping off day after day after day in the coming months throughout the rest of the end of the year? Well, we're going to find out today. So uh, there was some news that was just released last night that stated that the U.S. debt rating, which accounts for their standing as a global leader on the world scale, was just downgraded from AAA to AA+. Uh, It's a pretty big deal. Everybody's talking about it. Is this a black swan event? Is everything just going to go to hell and your portfolio, my portfolio, everybody's portfolio is just going to go to zero and the entire U.S. economy is going to die and that's just going to be the end of it. Well, let's take a look at the articles here that talks about this. So um, this is uh, Reuters and for um, both of these articles, you guys can go ahead and take a look at these yourself if you want to just Type in, you know, downgrades the United States uh, long-term ratings from AAA to AA+, like it says right there. So anyways, um, it says here that uh, on August 2nd, Fitch downgraded the U.S. credit rating due to fiscal concerns, a deterioration in U.S. governance, as well as political polarization reflected partly by the January 6th insurrection Uh, Richard Francis, senior director at Fitch Ratings, told Reuters on Wednesday. In a move that took investors by surprise, Fitch downgraded the United States from AA or to AA plus from AAA on Tuesday. And that was yesterday. I actually saw that news come out as I was looking at my portfolio closer towards the end of the night. I was quite shocked. I had to do a double take because I was like, wait, what a minute? (laughs) What the hell is going on here? Like, what is this? I, this has got to be some kind of fluke, right? So it says citing a fiscal deterioration over the next three years and repeated down to the wire debt ceiling negotiations that threaten the government's ability to pay its bills. Um, when they're talking about January 6th here, they're talking about the January 6th riots um, when Donald Trump was president. So if you guys don't know what that is, that's basically what that is. Um, This is on the Fitch website. So the last time that the United States had a downgrade in their credit rating was in 2011 uh, by Standard & Poor's. So 2011 is actually a big hallmark, and I'm going to bring this up at a later point, but here's the kind of the synopsis of why it's such a big deal. Because in 2011, that was after the ending of the last recession. As everybody knows that studies the markets, the last big recession took place in 2008 and 2009. 2011 was two years after the end of that recession. Last year was the worst recorded bear market year in, I think, like since the 1980s. It was just a brutal, absolutely brutal year. Big tech stocks got smashed. Small tech stocks nearly went to zero. Um, Even some of the biggest, most well-established companies like Pepsi and, well, maybe maybe not Pepsi. I think Pepsi did actually go up last year. But a lot of big name companies like Dividend Kings, Dividend Aristocrats got absolutely destroyed last year. Uh, A lot of the big tech companies that were being talked about that were like the next big thing and everybody's you know, got to buy these tech companies and they didn't have any real earnings or any fundamentals back in the company. It was basically all just hype. Yeah. Those went down about 80 to 90% too. So when we take a look at the timeline of this in 2008, 2009, there was a recession in 2011, there was a downgrade for the first time by S and P on the United States credit rating. And Last year, or in 2021, in November, the Fed announced that they were going to start raising rates. That's when the S&P and the other markets started to fall off a cliff. 
And then from there, they would go down for all of 2022. The Fed raised rates in March of 2022. That's when they began. And the bottom of the bear market was around, I think, October of last year, I want to say. I'm going to look at the charts in a minute. So as you can see, it's kind of repeating itself. We get this, the Fed's going to raise rates, the market's tag, and then the U.S. gets downgraded. So if you guys want to look at this um, this article here, you can. They give different key reasons as to why they're giving the downgrade. Um, obviously, national debt is a huge issue. I'll go ahead and type that in. Uh, one second here. Let's see. National debt. Go to the U.S. national debt clock. Uh, as you guys can see, for the total U.S. national debt here, it's sitting at just over $32 trillion. Um, I remember before the COVID dump that this thing was only like somewhere around 15 to 20 trillion. So it's nearly doubled since that time. And that was only about three years ago. As you guys know, the, uh, the fed basically the fed and the politicians came out, uh, after the COVID lockdowns and printed like some eight, $10 trillion or something. It was absolutely insane. And then inflation happened and then the fed had to go and raise rates. And then the bear market took place. And now we're taking a look at another downgrade on the U S so I'm going to go over to the charts here and just kind of give you guys a rundown of what it looks like on the day. Um, I actually uh, day trade the markets during the morning time, which is usually why I don't upload until the afternoon. So if you guys are wondering why, that's why. Um, but as you guys can see, uh, the news on the event came out somewhere, somewhere like right in here, which is pretty coincidental because that was roughly around the top of this move here. But then you guys can see here that when, well, actually even before the market opened, but especially when the market opened, this thing basically just fell off in a cliff. Traders were pretty much anticipating that it was going to be a bearish day. So they started selling off in advance of the open. And then the open happened, had a little bounce and then boom, just got absolutely smashed to the downside and this was actually on oil which doesn't necessarily have a direct um uh the supposed black swan event doesn't have a direct effect on oil but on the s p it absolutely does so um this is roughly right in here somewhere where the news came out as you guys can see just started selling off investors didn't, didn't care they saw it as a black swan they're like screw this i'm getting out selling my position holding cash whatever uh, and then it tried to go back up and just got absolutely smashed to the downside. So I'm going to switch this over to a daily and show you guys just how big of a deal this is. Look at this massive move down. So if I measure this from the gap all the way to the bottom of this thing, you can see that the S&P in one single day dropped 2%. That's a big deal. If the S&P or any of the markets drop 1% or more in a big in a day, that's considered to be a big move. Um, so scrolling through here on uh, all the different markets and securities and crypto and whatnot that I'm watching, as you guys can see, everything has just gotten absolutely destroyed on this news, just completely smashed. Uh, pretty much all cryptos are down. A lot of altcoins are down. Um, Ethereum's down 2%. Bitcoin's down 2%. Go over the precious metals. Precious metals are down. Silver's down 2.5%. Copper's down 1.5%. Um, as you can see, the indices here, These are this is the futures, uh, futures version of the indices. So the Dow's down 1%. Russell's down 1.5%. NASDAQ's down 2.25%. The S and P is down one point five percent. Oil is down two percent. This is, I mean, this is pretty much a broad sell off. So this is something that you would typically see in a black swan event or the start of a black swan event. It usually starts off bearish and then it gets more. It sells off more aggressively as time moves forward. That's usually how it goes. It's like, I guess the w best way to describe it would be like suddenly, um, or not suddenly, um. Uh, slowly 
slowly, gradually, and suddenly would be the best way to describe it. So the sell-off starts out slow, starts ramping up a little bit more, and then it just absolutely falls off a cliff. That's usually how it goes. Um, a lot of these right here are tech names I'm looking at. So as you can see, they just got absolutely de destroyed. C3 AI. Um, this thing got smashed pretty hard on the daily. Uh, down 11.5%. QBTS down 20%. Uh, keep going up. Shopify is down seven and a half percent. Open Door is another popular one that's down almost ten percent. It was actually down more than ten percent at one point in the day. Uh, let's see, APLD is down nine percent. SOUN is down five percent. Uh, Snaps down three percent. I mean, the list just keeps going on and on and on. Red, 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 red across the board. Uh, Tesla's down 3%, NVIDIA's down 5%, Google's down 2%, ARKK is down 5%. All of the tech names are down. And actually, a lot of the um, dividend paying positions are also down too. Uh, 3M's down, Altria's down, Kinder Morgan's down. Pretty much almost everything here. So, uh, yeah, it, it just keeps going on and on and on and on. Um, as you guys can see here, the uh, the dollar index and the VIX have moved up massively. That's usually what happens when risk on assets go down. The dollar will go up and the VIX will go up. They kind of have an inver inverse correlation with each other. Um, and yields typically also go up too, although they haven't gone up as much as I thought they would. So... Um, so, oh yeah, so here's SVOL. So SVOL is, a, as I told you guys before, SVOL has an inverse correlation with the VIX. Um, the VIX is up massively, but SVOL is coming down. It pays 32 cents a month per share. Uh, it used to be at 23.15 a share, and now it's at 22.60. It's a great time to pick some up. Not financial advice, but I'm considering pick some, picking some up. So here's my thoughts on the whole U.S., downgrade thing is it a big deal absolutely could it be a black swan event yeah it definitely could it's possible that you know they could be a dump as bad if not worse than uh you know the, the um, corona dump that happened back in 2020 i probably can't use the word because i might get a strike on my account or something if i say it but um is it a black swan event could be. We really don't know yet. We'll just have to wait and see uh, how it plays out. What could it do for our portfolios? Now, here's the key. Um, as investors, you know, we like to try to pick things up as cheap as possible. A lot of long-term investors want to buy on the dip. This is a great dip buying opportunity. Am I going to ape in, go 100%, buy everything now, just go balls to the wall on picking up shares at these prices. No, I'm not, honestly. Um, last year is, is, is a good example of why I would not do something like that because if I had gotten into, and um, I'm actually just, I'm going to show you guys this on the SPY and I'm actually bringing the SPY up for a reason, but let's just say for a second that I had decided to get in all in on uh on the S and P last year at the start of the year in January, if I had done that and I went hundred percent in and didn't DCA through that entire market, I would have lost from peak to trough almost 25% of my initial investment. And I would have had to spend all that time sitting on that unrealized loss. And nobody wants that, right? Nobody wants to see their portfolio go down by such a massive amount. So what I intend to do is I'm just going to DCA in, wait and see how this play thing plays out. If I get like a little extra capital here or there, I'll put a little extra in, but I'm not going to put massive amounts in. Um, I don't think that the downgrade is as big of a deal as everybody's making it out to be. <clears throat> it is a big deal in and of itself, but the reason I think it's not as big of a deal 
is because it already happened once before. And then the credit rating got upgraded shortly again after that, after the downgrade. So it could happen again. It could get upgraded again. And this could just be a whole nothing burger or news outlets could come out and say, oh, well, you know, sorry, whoops, we made a mistake. It, there was actually no credit downgrade. We made a miscalculation. And then the markets just go up again. It happens all the time. These kinds of things happen all the time. It's not really a big deal. If it does continue to drop for weeks or months from this point going forward, then I'll just continue to DCA. Um, nothing changes. You know, if prices go up, I make money, I take profit and my income goes up. If prices go down, then I buy and I get more income for less money because as you guys know, yield and price are inversely correlated. Um, when the price goes down, the yield goes up. You can buy more for less and get more income for less money. And the inverse is true. If the price goes up, the yield comes down, you get less income or it takes more money to get the same income, but you also get gains if you want to take profit. Some people don't. Some people do. I like to take profits, especially in situations like this. Um, like, for example, Tesla. I took about $200 in gains on Tesla as it was moving up, but I made sure I was positioned before the ex-dividend date so I didn't miss out on the income. And I'm glad I did because my Tesla position went up from or went down from plus 20% to negative 5% um, as I'm speaking right now. So me personally, taking profits is a big deal. I will continue to take profits. Um, it's just what I do. I'd rather make twice the money than just make the normal amount. Uh, but is this going to lead to a new bear market? Is Are we going to have an absolute collapse? Well, this is the last thing I want to show you guys before I close this video out. Um, I actually need to change some of this. These are my day trading slash swing trading indicators. These are not my macro indicators. Um, so I'm going to pull up my uh, what I like to refer to as um, that's odd. Uh, hold on a second. It's simple. For some reason it's not pulling up. I don't know what's going on here, but um, okay, I don't know. For some reason, the regular moving average is not on here, so we'll just go with the EMAs then, I suppose. Uh, but I have what I like to call a bull, a bull bear market band or a support band. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up and then I'll explain it to you guys. Uh, put on the 50, 100, and the 200. Um, I'll make this band green. And I'll make the 100... white so they're all very noticeable to each other okay so this is the bull bear support band on the weekly time frame this is my macro scale overall what is the overall market direction look like okay over the years basically um so i'm gonna go ahead and scroll back to 2008 so you guys can see this as you guys can see going along here, this thing has held support massively for the entire, basically the entirety of the bull market since 2011. Or, uh, sorry, not 2011, 2000. Oh yeah, I guess it would be 2011, 2010, 2011, something like that. So this is how you know that we're truly in a bear market. So as you can see, um, the 50 here crosses below the 100. Okay, we get a test, we move lower, so we have a high, a low, a lower high, and then a lower low. Um, what I'm actually wanting to see here is I'm wanting to see the 200, this would be an MA, but it's not available for some reason, EMA. I want to see this turn from support into resistance. So once we got here and we had this uh, close below. What I'm looking for is for it to come up, retest, and then get rejected off of that 200. 
that's how I know that this truly is a black swan event or a recession. And we really are about to see a, a huge sell off, which means, you know, you could pick up, we could pick up shares for cheap, extremely cheap. This is part of the reason why I'm DCA and not going all in because if it goes down to those prices, I want to be able to have plenty of dry powder on the side to buy for as long as it takes. Um, so this thing came up retested. We do a percentage measurement here. This thing went down a whopping, basically almost 40, 48, maybe 50% somewhere in there. Yeah, 49% from the time it retested the 200 all the way down. And once it got out of this, it came back, closed back above the 200. It was a little iffy here, but um, as you can see, for the most part, the 200 has more or less held over the years. Again, we had a little kind of hiccup there, but uh, once it got above the 200, it, it started you know, holding it strongly, moving up. We basically just went up, 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 up for years on end. Um, 2016, bounced again off the 200. 2020 bounced again off the two or uh, that's 2018. Sorry. 2018 bounced again off the, uh, 200. This was when, uh, Trump forced the fed to start, um, uh, cutting rates. So the fed was raising rates here and then they started cutting here and then the markets went higher. This was the 2020 Corona dump. Um, if this was an MA, the MA would actually be sitting um, a little bit lower than this. So unfortunately, it's not going to be as accurate, but it didn't hold the 200, but it ultimately ended up moving back up because the Fed came in. But here's the one that I want to point out that's most important. So this was the bear market lows last year in 2022 in June and in October. And as you can see, more or less, we pretty much just held it. It kind of went slightly below the 200 but then came back up and then once we got above this resistance here it was basically just off to the off to the races off to the moon so my synopsis for this overall picture is do i think that the market's going to go down to the abyss as a result of the downgrade no honestly i don't um if anything what i see happening maybe is this thing goes possibly as low as maybe 4,000 to 4,100. Um, if I go ahead and switch this over to the nine and the 21, which is what I've been using recently to measure the moves in the market, uh, I could see us going down as low as maybe 4,320 at the absolute lowest. Um, that's also actually the previous peak here, which could be turned into support. But do I think we're going to go lower than that? No. Again, I'm just some guy on here giving my opinion. Um, but anyways, this is my synopsis on the whole U.S. debt downgrade thing. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer you when I can. Let me know what your what your thoughts are about this and what you intend to do, whether you're going to buy, sell, whatever you might do with your portfolio. And uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you all later. Peace.